Hello and welcome to Real Day Trading. Believe it or not, this is the fourth time I'm doing this video, audio problems, and needless to say, it's going to be shorter because I can't imagine going through all of this again. I mean, we're done on three different rants and they were all different, by the way. Each rant was a different rant. So those I'm going to have to save for another day. I'm going to quickly go through our positions here. Wasn't a bad day. We're at 3200 around. We got up $200, but we're in pretty good position with the account. And I'll tell you why. Well, obviously everything can change overnight, but for the moment, we're in decent position. And our positions are these. We have NVIDIA. We did great within a video call, right? We made our $500 with that. And then we jumped back in again for the 260, 265 call debit spread. And right now there's still about $500 left to get out of that call debit spread. It is at 267. So as long as it stays above 265, I'm going to let it run until it hits around 80, 85% profit. Doing great there. MU, we got 86 strike calls. We got those for around $2 and what, 40 cents, something like that. Well, now it's at $90 and 60 cents. It jumped up $2 50 cents from when we bought it. We got three of those. So just pure right alone without premium at $750 in profit that we can expect if the price stays anywhere near there and more if it goes up. BKKT, well, that one was in uh, a lot of profit earlier today. And now after hours, it seems to have gone down a bit. Still, we should be able to take $100, $200 there. CME, well, that one, that one there was a pain in the ass. Here's some profit taking on CME. Here we go here. We got a call debit spread on that, right? And we took a 750, 250, 250 call debit spread. And we took it right around there. Um, and of course, here comes the profit taking right here, right? And you can see we're at an all time high. So there's no bag holders up here. This profit taking shouldn't last that long. There's no reason not to buy here. I think that this spread's going to be fine. It's currently dinged us around $400 on the account. So even just getting it back to even is going to push us up another 400. But if it gets and we start making profit on it, it's it'll be a nice swing, a very nice turnaround on this position. So counting on CME to help us out. BBIG and BHG, these are two to six cent, eight cent calls. These are kind of like spec calls. Uh, BBIG every month seems to pop. So I got some uh, lotto calls on this. And BHG actually has a really nice... Um, Really nice daily chart here. We just rammed right through the 50 SMA without a problem. So I'm kind of, you know, bullish on this one. And it didn't cost much to get the $5 calls. And they're out February 18th. I think this one might actually come in and hopefully hold it for a while. Um, Dell. Dell. Well, Dell, you can see, is doing quite well. Um, earnings still to come up for Dell. But... It broke through its horizontal resistance here. It came back down a bit, but got an alert on it. This stock here needs a little bit of volume, but should be good. Only got one option on it, so I'm not going to make or break the account. Needed a hedge because God knows Facebook didn't do a good job hedging the damn account, did it? No. Amazon was that hedge, and I will show you why. You can see here... Um, Amazon is relatively weak to the market down here. This is the relative weakness. You can also look at Amazon over here on this chart and you see all this red. This is relative weakness. This is institutional selling going on with Amazon. That's a pretty good hedge. Uh, I think that even if the market's up tomorrow, there's a good chance Amazon might not be up with it. And even if it is up with it, at some point it's going to swing back down. So we could always buy back our short put on Amazon. 
maybe i mean it sure put an amazon 26 dollars would be kind of hard to buy it back unless we had full buying power but um kind of hoping that we could sell this back in for i don't know maybe two three hundred dollars profit is what i'm looking for on a trade like this it's a hedge i'm not looking for much if we get a lot more profit out of it then that's probably bad for the rest of our positions um we can take a quick look for the fourth time at our positions here like i said nvidia we did great with um nlok -OK. well this is a good lesson here now if we look at nlok -OK, Let's just bring this up here and go to NLOK -OK real fast. No, no, no. NLOK, -OK. damn it. There we are. Good. Okay. Yesterday would have been nice to take it that we didn't have the day trade, right? Great. It would have, we had a nice profit up here, up around $300 on the trade. Today, what happened? What did we do? Well, I took profit here, right down here. Why? Well, uh, Two reasons if you look here i did not know if the bag holders up here were starting to take profit and was going to knock it back down but mainly i needed the buying power normally i would hold the stock like this there's no reason not to hold the stock like this i would have held the stock like this but i couldn't hold the stock like this because i needed the buying power to get into bkkt and at the time you have to ask, i was thinking in the same question you have to ask yourself I have, all right, $500 sitting in this trade. Is it better spent somewhere else? Is there a better use for this money? Particularly if the trade is going nowhere or especially if the trade is going down. So, you you know, if you're in a trade and is losing money, well, then maybe it's better spent elsewhere unless you have a good technical reason not to. Well, here I had a not a bad thesis that the selling might have continued for a bit and I took it took the money, put it into another stock. The stock wound up doing well, BKKT. But obviously, if I stayed in this stock, it would have continued going up. Obviously, if I had the buying power, it would have continued to make profit for my account. So that is a decision and type of, of, of mindset you have to have at these type of accounts that you don't with larger accounts, which is, is this money better spent somewhere else? Okay. Um. There is one rant that I want to make sure I quickly go over here because I, I keep hearing it again and again and again and again and again. When people think they can use their common sense to predict where a stock is going. Let's just think about that for a second. You're sitting there and think to yourself, Oh, wait a minute. The pandemic's almost over. People are going out of the house more, which means they'll be driving more, which means they'll be buying more gas. So Chevron is going to go up. Or Netflix is going to go down because people won't be home and they'll be canceling their subscriptions. You, you need to realize and I, and I know this probably makes people feel small and insignificant because you are. We all are. But we do not dictate these prices. I keep saying it over and over. Institutions do. And institutions have millions of dollars spent on research and data scientists. They take all of that into account. Right? And it's not like all of a sudden they're out there and going long on Netflix and they're pouring millions of dollars into it. And then a senior vice president runs into the CEO's office like, oh, my God, did you read what Bob from Oklahoma said? He pointed out that that people won't be watching it as much. They're going to be they're going to be out of the house. They're going to cancel their subscriptions. Oh, my God, we got to sell someone get bob in here we need bob that's that's what has to go through your mind to think that, that your logic is going to pan out just like when when a company reports earnings and it's good earnings and you see the stock drop 
You don't know if institutions are buying for tomorrow, six days from now, six months from now, six years from now. You have no idea what their game plan is and why they're buying or selling. They have one and they're going to make money off of it because they always do. But you don't know what that is. So the stock price right now may not reflect anything of the present day. It might reflect what they think it should be four months from now. So to sit there and try to predict tops and bottoms, what you're really doing is trying to predict what other retail traders are going to do. That's what you're that's what you're really doing. Not that that would be the mentality of when you're looking at something like MU and you think, oh, it keeps going up, keeps going up. It's too late for me to get in. I got in here. I got in right around here. I made you know, almost three dollars a share on that. I made another three dollars a share in after hours. Most people, and I saw a post of people saying, Well, I missed it. I missed the run up today. You know, that, that, that's what other retail traders think. That's not how institutions don't go, well, wait a minute, we got to stop buying MU. Why? Well, it, it's gone up a lot. I mean, how much more can it go up in one day? We got we to get out. We can't buy now. Like, no, that, that's, what, that's what other people think. That's what retail traders think. And so you're basing your decisions off of what you think other retail traders are going to do, and they don't impact this price not because they can't but because they're not no but they're not all acting in unison it takes millions of dollars to move these prices and unless you as an individual trader are going to contribute that much liquidity into these trades you're not moving the price now we can move the volume on certain options, and we have, right? I've tweeted out a couple options and saw the volume shoot up. When the volume shoots up, you see the bid ask spread tighten, you see the prices change. Okay, right? Great. We can do that. But overall, you're not impacting the price and you're not out predicting institutions. What you need to do is read these these charts, these candlesticks, because these tell the story of what institutions wind up doing. This is the story right here. Sold off and then bounced back up. And now they're heading right back up to where they were. Algo lines, resistance points, support point. All these tell you and give you a hint of the breadcrumbs that institutions are leaving behind to help you figure out where it might be going next. And that's your job as a trader. Your job as a trader is to look at a chart like this and see way back here in, uh, in June, it keeps trying to hit against the 100-day moving average. Nope, rejected. Goes all the way back down. Let's try it again. Buy, 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 buy. Get through the 50. A little bit of a, of a death cross here. Goes up, up, up. Nope, reject it again. Oh, this time, I'm going to sink it down farther. Down, 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 past the 200, down here, right? Oh, let's try it again. Going to go up, going to go up, going to go up. Boom, nope, not enough. Not going to get it through. Now this time, we're going to sink it down even further. Okay, consolidate. Let's see, I think we've, I think we've made our, our message heard here. Going to try again. Up, 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 up. This time we're not even aiming for the 100 anymore. That's long gone. Now we're just aiming for the 50. Nope, rejected. Okay, we're going to sink it even further. Bam, all the way down here. Is this cheap enough now? Well, let's see. Boom, straight through. Boom, straight through. Gap up, boom, straight through. Consolidate, jump up again. That is a story. It's right there for you, right? So if you're in the middle of this, you can, you can start to see what's happening. You can start to see what's happening here. That's why we're long on this stock. This time it didn't even hesitate, didn't even bother. Let's test the 50. It said, screw the 50. 
Went right through it. Okay. I cannot possibly do another one of these. So, I hope you all have a pleasant evening. Sit back, relax, have a brandy or whatever the fuck you drink. And make sure you use that time to live life to the fullest. Live in the moment. And in that moment, the thing you should be doing is reading the damn wiki. Have a good night, everyone.